Today we're making a whole grain sandwich bread that is delicious as toast or turning into any sort of sandwich, amazing grilled cheese. But it also has a special and exciting ingredient, our new climate blend flour that's good for the planet. So before we get into making this bread, let's talk about this flour for a minute. We started working with the Bread Lab in 2009, and we worked together to focus on innovative wheat growing that's good for our baking as well as good for the planet. So we've partnered with the Bread Lab to breed both climate resilient wheat that can withstand all the effects of climate change as our environment changes in the coming years. And this specific wheat that's in this flour is a perennial wheat, which basically means that it grows back for two to three years without having to be planted every single year, which is really good for the soil. And beyond that, it's great for baking because it has a really nutty flavor, gives your baked goods a tender texture, so it's perfect for things like muffins, scones, and of course, sandwich bread. So let's get into making this. So the first step that we're going to do to make our bread is add 402 grams, which is about three and a half cups, to our bowl. I'm measuring with a scale because that will ensure we get just the right amount. And then we'll add our water, which is lukewarm, about 100 degrees, feels a little bit warm to the touch. Adding that right in with the flour. And then I'm going to mix these two things together before I add any other ingredients and then we'll let it rest for about 20 minutes. And this brief resting period is called an auto lease and it allows the dough to hydrate, the flour absorbs some of that water, and because we're using whole grain flour, it has the bran included, which is the outer part of the wheat kernel, and it allows the bran to soften. Basically, it just makes the dough a lot easier to knead and it gives the bread a really nice final texture. So I'm using a dough whisk to combine the flour and water, and once it gets a bit stiff, you can switch to a bowl scraper and just make sure that all of the floury bits at the bottom are combined. And I'll just switch to kneading by hand a little bit. We're not trying to develop the dough strength at all. We're just trying to combine the flour and water. So that looks good. I'm going to stop here. I'll cover this and allow it to rest for about 20 minutes, and then we'll come back and it will be much easier to knead. So our dough has finished resting. It's been about 20 minutes. The dough immediately feels a little bit softer to the touch, and it will be much easier to knead at this point. I'll add the rest of my dough ingredients, which include vegetable oil, gives the bread some tenderness, helps with the shelf life, instant yeast, salt for flavor, and then honey. Honey will give the bread a little bit of sweetness, but it will also help with the browning. So I'll show you how to knead this dough by hand. It does get a little bit messy. It's a lot easier if you use a mixer, but I'll show you how to do it if you don't have a mixer accessible. Super helpful to have a bowl scraper if you are going to try to knead this by hand. I'll start by scraping down the sides of the bowl and almost cutting the dough in a chopping motion to start incorporating some of those liquid ingredients. So I'm using the bowl scraper to fold the dough over onto itself and incorporate some of the oil and the honey. So once the honey and oil are mostly absorbed into the dough, I'll turn this out onto a lightly greased surface and we'll finish kneading by hand. Okay, this looks pretty good. Because this dough is still a little sticky, I'm going to spray a little bit of nonstick spray on my work surface. I'm gonna ask a friend, hey Lydia, could you come help me with my hands? Thank you. I'll turn the dough out onto the surface and then knead just as you would with any other dough. It will feel a little messy and slippery at first, but it will start to smooth out once it gains strength and the ingredients become incorporated. So I'm just folding and turning the dough. It's okay if it sticks a little bit, it'll become incorporated near the end. So this process will take about 10 minutes if you're kneading by hand, maybe about seven minutes in a mixer otherwise. It's kind of magical how all of a sudden it goes from this like gloppy mess to something that looks a lot like bread dough. Isn't that cool? So it'll take about 10 minutes of kneading by hand for your dough to smooth out. If it becomes sticky at any point, you can spray your hands with a little bit more spray or use a tool to release it. 
And in the meantime, let me tell you a little bit more about where the Climate Blend flour comes from and why it's so special. So the wheat for this flour is grown by multi-generational farmers in North Dakota and Montana. And these farmers are committed to regenerative agricultural practices. And specifically for this batch of Climate Blend, it was grown by two farmers named Brandon Bach and Brock Linker, who are committed to changing the way that they grow their crops and use regenerative agricultural practices. As a company, we take our role seriously in creating a more resilient environment for the future and for all. And we're starting this focus on wheat, which is where, as a baking company, we have the most impact. We've set the ambitious goal to source all of our wheat from regeneratively grown sources by 2030. So while you've been learning about our awesome farmers, I've been kneading my dough. It's been about 10 minutes, and it feels smooth, strong, and bouncy to the touch. So I'm going to put it back in my greased bowl and cover it, and allow it to rise for about an hour. So our dough has been rising for about an hour, and it looks great. It has doubled in size, looks nice and puffy, and it's ready to be shaped. So I'm going to work on a lightly greased surface instead of lightly floured, because that way I won't incorporate extra flour and it'll keep the dough nice and light. I also have my loaf pan right here. This is a standard eight and a half by four and a half loaf pan and I'll give it a light grease. And that way the dough will come right out once it's baked. Using a bowl scraper, you want to gently turn the dough out of the bowl right onto the spot where you greased. And you can spray your hands a little bit at this point if the dough feels sticky. So to shape this into a standard sandwich loaf or a pan bread, I'm going to gently deflate it just a little bit, pat the dough out into a rectangle. And there's many ways to do this next step, but I'll show you the way that we teach in our baking school and you can use whatever works best for you. So this is called the head and shoulders method. So you start by tucking in the little shoulders of your dough. Imagine the top is a head. So tuck in your shoulders. Now you can see this looks a little bit more like a head and then you bring the head down and fold the sides or the little arms in and then bring the whole thing down, pulling the dough away a little bit to create some tension so that you get a nice tight structure. Then we'll bring the shoulders in one more time then the head, pat to seal, fold it down again, seal the sides, kind of tuck the ends in, and then to finish the loaf, just roll it over so that the seam is on the bottom, kind of roll it back and forth, tuck in the ends, then pick up the whole log, should feel nice and tight, place it in your greased pan, and then just give it a gentle press with your hand so that the dough fills out into the corners that will give you a more evenly shaped loaf all the way from the end to the end, rather than having a loaf that has a huge dome in the middle. So I'll cover this and let it rise for another 60 to 90 minutes until it's crested the edge of the pan by about an inch. Then we know it's time for the oven. Our bread has been rising for about an hour, so I'll gently remove the cover and it looks beautiful. It's risen about one inch over the edge of the pan in the center here, so it's ready to go into our preheated oven. Our bread just came out of the oven. It smells amazing in here and it's looking beautiful. It's nicely risen and golden brown. And I checked the temperature with a thermometer to make sure it was done and it was 190 degrees. And now, as a final touch, I'm going to brush a little bit of melted butter onto the top. Brushing the top with melted butter will give the loaf a really nice shine and it will also add some buttery flavor. So you want to do this while the loaf is still hot. So that way it'll melt the butter further and it will soak in a bit. So now I'll turn the loaf out of the pan to let it cool on a rack. So allow the loaf to cool completely. It is hard to wait, but it will give the bread the best structure and texture if you let it cool completely before slicing. So our bread is fully cooled and I've sliced it. The texture is really nice and soft and it smells nutty and like a really good whole wheat flour that's fresh. And this would make incredible toast or grilled cheese. It's so flavorful. You can taste the nutty whole grains and there's a little bit of sweetness from the honey. It's super delicious. One of my favorites for sandwiches or toast. 
If you've tried baking with whole grains before, like whole wheat flour or white whole wheat, you're going to love baking with Climate Blend. It still has a lot of those qualities, but it also does great things for the environment. So support that initiative by picking up a bag of Climate Blend flour and making this recipe. You're gonna love it. It's good for you, good for the planet. It's just delicious bread too. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.